This is what 700 plus horsepower looks like under the hood of a 12 valve Cummins. And this is the face of the person that's gonna be giving this truck to you. Yes, guys, you can enter to win this truck right now plus $5,000 cash. And all you've gotta do is go to lmpgear.com, buy anything you like on the store, and as soon as you check out, you're automatically entered to win. Plus, right now, we are doing a 15 times bonus entry for launch week. So all items on the store, except for mystery boxes, those get you 20X entries no matter when you buy one, and they get you 20X entries automatically into every giveaway we do. But for all other items on the store, 15 times entries are live right now towards winning this truck plus the five grand. 15 times entries is a very limited thing and it's going to be ending very soon. So I wouldn't recommend wasting much time. Grab those for launch week and get those 15 times bonus entries if you're not interested in a mystery box because that is our highest entry multiplier of this giveaway. If somebody's got to take this thing home, somebody could be you. Wish me luck. Definitely gonna be uh, different driving up and down roads like this every day compared to the flat land where Reagan and I are used to. Look at the views all around. Welcome back to another video here on Loud and Proud, guys. I'm getting ready to drop off our first load here at our new house, new shop. I'm not gonna be going through the house or anything in this video or showing you anything about the house um, because they are still needing about another week or two before they're completely out of there, before I wanna go and you know, filming their personal stuff still in the house getting moved out. We are gonna show you guys the shop today. We're gonna at least go through and show you what we're working with, maybe just from an inside perspective, um, go over the size of it and stuff like that and maybe show you a little bit of the scenery out behind the shop and stuff. It's gonna be it's gonna be a way different setting than what you guys are used to seeing around our current place. I'm very excited for the stages coming up next with getting this thing ready to actually be an operating and functional shop. So let's get on down the road here a little bit further. We got the Alice Chalmers. We got the WD-45 here. We're gonna be dropping off. That's the first thing I wanted to get out of here before we picked up the U-Haul truck. I just wanted to make sure that we could get you know, the stuff that we don't need a U-Haul truck for that I just need to get out of there, like the tractor and the bush hog and just bigger stuff, obviously, we can't put in a U-Haul truck. That way it's done so that when we do get the truck to just throw all of our boxes of furniture in, um, at least this stuff is gone and out of the way. So first trip, almost done. We should be there in about five minutes. one way to do it. I took everything out of the back of the truck and put it on the bush hog of the tractor and I'm going to pull it all the way back to the shop. Here's 
Here we are in what is soon to be the new shop space. And so I'm gonna go over just some things about the barn, but I'm gonna go over some of the quirks and things about it that um, are gonna need to get addressed and just a gist of what we're going to be doing, but not like full details on every single spec and every, you know, all the stuff that we're gonna be doing. But um, we're gonna give you guys a gist of what we're gonna be working with here and give you guys a look around. So right now it's nothing too crazy. It's a 30 wide, 40 long um, pole barn. It was built in the 90s and it's it's a little bit different because I personally have never seen anything built the way that this one's built in terms of the siding slash insulation that they use. So from the outside, it just kind of looks like, you know, normal 90s built pole barn. It's actually garage doors. <laughs> <laughs> that makes up the siding and the reason they said that they did that previous homeowner he said apparently it was just kind of a thing because it was considered siding and insulation so there was apparently quite a few people at least in this area back in the 90s that did that style of siding even though they're garage doors um, because then it was kind of like you're doing your insulation hanging and your siding at the same time. Not sure how long we're gonna keep that, but for a little while initially, we're probably just gonna keep it that way because I'm not sure at what point I'm gonna to wanna to have everything tore off and redone on it. Because structurally, the pole barn is in totally good shape. Like all the posts are good, nothing's rotted out, everything's good, all the framing's good. Um, there's no like holes in the roof or anything like that, so everything's good there. I do wanna finish off the inside because I wanna be able to have, you know, nice, flush finished off walls whether it's going to be for benches or just having that clean look in the shop so everything looks more functional and it, the lighting in here is better and everything's more organized um, that's going to be the goal for that the ceiling i'm still debating how i want to go about the ceiling because initially my thoughts were doing steel like we were going to do at our other place but then i stopped halfway through i'm like this is just not going to work well because there's cats coming in and out of the barn, horse coming in and out of the barn, sheep coming in and out of the barn, chickens coming in and out of the barn. It was an animal barn that I was trying to make a shop space at the same time. And I just got burnt out with the idea of it actually working out. And I was like, this is just, it's just not going to work out. And so I just kind of gave up on that shop and horse barn in one concept because it just really was not going to work the way that we ha would have had to do it. So. That's gonna be the concept in here, finishing everything out, making sure there's plenty of outlets and electric and stuff like that. And then we're gonna be doing something with the ceiling and insulation as well, trimming off all the edges and all the corners where there's little gaps on the outside by finishing up all the trim and then running some really nice LED lighting all throughout the barn space in here as well. I'm still debating on exactly how I'm gonna be able to do that or how I should do that. So my debate with a lift is, um, couple of things that I'm trying to think through because obviously there's no concrete in the shop right now. So that's all gonna, everything that I'm talking about is gonna have to get done. As soon as we get moved in here, we're gonna have to have it all done because I'm gonna be using this as my designated shop space. The roof line to here is about 10 feet from the bottom of the door here, which is about six inches above ground level which is nice because we're gonna have to gravel fill a little bit and then concrete. And then same with the garage doors, they're gonna probably be getting replaced with newer stuff and everything else, but they're about six inches off the ground because of the anticipation of having concrete installed at some point. But then that's about 10, but then once you get to the middle here where the lights are hanging, that's about 12 feet. I'm standing up on some boards here, but that's about um, 12 feet to there assuming that we have concrete you know four inch concrete to six four to six inch concrete with a little bit more gravel fill um and you can see like the tractor even you know it's probably i'm shy of six foot it's probably six five to the stack to the top of the to the flapper on the alice chalmers and it's about that same distance up again um, by the time you actually get to the height of the tractor there, it's probably about that same distance up again until you hit the rafter. So it's about 10 to there, and then by the time you get up to these, it's about 12. In terms of a lift, you're not gonna have a lot of a lot of extra room, but it would be enough to where you can at least get under a truck if you're like trying to install you know, a lift kit or something like that. You should be able to at least get under and work around it a little bit. Um, you know, you're not gonna have it like 
to where the truck's seven feet off the ground, obviously. That's, you know, you can't do that with a ceiling this low, but it'll be enough to where you can still, you know, install lift kits and stuff like that, get the truck up off its own weight. If you had to swap an axle or lift a bed off, just whatever, lift a cab, you guys get the idea. We'll still have plenty of room to be able to do at least stuff like that. And a lift would just make that so much, so much nicer. And I'm probably gonna put it in this corner over here that way you can still get in and out of that garage door. And these garage doors are actually offset. Right now they're only 10 foot wide doors. At some point I wouldn't mind having them wider, at least having a 16 footer in the front or 14 footer in the front. But for now, this would still be fine because the doors at our current house, they're also 10 by 10 doors. And I got even like the whistling diesel dually that I had at that one point. I mean, that thing was wide and I was able to pull that into the shop and it didn't hit the, it didn't hit the post. There was only like, three inches on each side of the tires, but it was still, you know, a big dually truck and it was still able to pull in and pull out even as wide as it was. So at least for now, it's still functional enough. You know, you're just gonna have to look in your mirror, make sure you don't hit the post, but you should be fine. If I didn't say it already, the shop space is a 40 by 30. And so it's not, huge so it's not a giant shop but it's going to be more usable shop space than i'm used to having right now especially since it'll be level have concrete and insulation lighting and all that stuff and there's not going to be any animals in here so i can have somebody come out here and finish sealing off all the cracks in terms of you know the roof line and everything else and just make sure everything's done properly and then have the concrete done and the walls finished out and everything and the electric all ran to all the outlets and it's not gonna be the cheapest process, but it's gonna be worth having done. Even though it's a 30 by 40, it's not like as big as my dream shop necessarily. It'll definitely be a dream compared to what I'm doing right now once it's all done. And you just gotta keep the vision. You gotta, you gotta have the vision for this because right now it's obviously not, it's not done. Um, it's like as if we were gonna build a shop that was a 30 by 40 and they just got the structure up and then we're going to the next steps. That's about where it's at right now. It should be enough to where if we have to, you know, since it's 40 foot long, you know, for your typical four door short bed trucks, we should be able to fit about four pickup trucks in here at a time if we had to, in terms of like from bumper to bumper up to the doors. And then if we've had to pull two in the back door to do back one in there and then back in another, um, you know, at least it would be an option if we had to get him out of the weather. So again, we'll do a house tour and stuff once we're actually moved in and some other, not an entire house tour, but to an extent. And we'll show you guys some of the stuff going on over there, but it's also got a big oversized two car attached garage that we didn't, we are not used to having at our other place that wasn't even an option. You know, we've got enough room out here for, you know, four pickup trucks, assuming they're four door short bed configuration. I'm just giving you a picture of how much we can fit in here. We also have garage space up there. So chances of us having to store four trucks in here at a time, including that garage space, we probably won't be, at least not at the moment, but if we have to, at least it'll be an option. And then if you come to the back here, you can see our view out the back, way different than the view out the back of our current place. I mean, we are in farm country. I mean, it's, it's pretty beautiful. Oh yeah. And you might be wondering, well, how are you gonna fit four trucks in here if you've got the tractor in here at the moment? Well, the thing of it is, there's actually a lean-to off the side of the barn as well, and I'll show you that. But we're actually going to be enclosing the lean-to off to the side here, which is currently just open, but we're actually gonna be closing in the lean-to and then being able to pull the tractor in here will be an option. So we're gonna try to get this enclosed and then do the groundwork and concrete and stuff. And that way we can actually pull the tractor in over here. Or if we have, you know, a couple implements or the tractor with a bush hog hooked up or whatever, we can at least get it stored over here. That way we can keep it out of the barn space. And for now, that is all the tour you're gonna get. Well guys, that is a preview of the bones of the new shop space and again currently it's pretty bare bones i mean it was just a pole barn that was built in the 90s and then it was never like finished in terms of actually being a finished out pole barn it was just kind of like your typical pole barn 
you know, your framing, your siding, roof, and that's about it. Um, and then gravel inside. I'm excited because we're gonna be getting that all, you know, finished out, and I think it's gonna turn out really good once it's done. I know it can be hard to see the vision, like the picture of it, before it's done. Everything structurally is fine with it. It's just bare bones, you know? It wasn't ever completely finished. And so I think if I just have a crew come out here and they finish it out, they do the concrete, finish out the inside, and hang some new lighting. All in all, it'll still only cost me half as much as it would if I had to completely redo and, you know, pay to have somebody tear down and then completely rebuild a new pole barn. But with the structure, since it's sound, I mean, I would rather just have that finished and the trim pieces on the outside get all done and anything that needs to be replaced, just get replaced and then, you know, use, use what's already there. And I've been trying to do less build stuff because I don't have any shop space right now. And some people just don't get that. You know, I, I've got guys that comments and, and I totally get it. I know they're just giving me a hard time, a lot of them. And, uh, and it's all good. I'm not like offended by it, but you know, people be like, oh, you know, are you gonna stop, you know, farming out all the work that's getting done on your trucks and stop buying trucks that are like pretty much ready to go and you know, just do stuff from the ground up like you used to in the beginning when you did all your own injectors and governor springs and valve springs and valve lash and all this stuff and actually did motor work and had body work done and did interior work like tons of different stuff to this to the trucks and to be honest i miss those days too i want to be able to do more of that stuff it's just hard when you have to like find a sunny day because i have to do it out in front of our shop or out in the driveway next to it or behind it because i don't have an indoor space i don't even have like an attached garage even just the garage that's attached to this house i wish i could show it to you guys right now it's way bigger than the shop space that i have available the shop space i have available in the barn that we're using for that kind of stuff off and on I mean it's just not ideal guys and I hate getting into projects and not having the right amount of space not having good lighting or any of these things you know it just makes it a pain in the butt and yes I could go over to my dad's place one project at a time try to get it all finished in a day or two and then get it out of his way so he can still use his barn for his stuff but it, it's just gonna be so much I just don't want to tear into big projects if I can't do it at my own place and stay out of other people's way it just makes stuff way easier uh, especially when you're trying to you know film it all and do it all as a day in and day out way of work and that's kind of what I do and I'd like to be able to do more projects that are more involving and I think this will be the ticket to be able to finally tear into some stuff a little deeper and have a lot of fun with it so I'm pretty excited yeah I got the tractor hauled up here in the bush hog those are the biggest things that I needed to get up here that I can't use a U-Haul truck for so I'm glad I got those done because the rest of it will be a breeze compared to having to get that hauled up because that bush hog does not fit on the trailer it's too wide so i had to like screw boards into the deck that extended out past on the back half of the trailer so that the tires could ride on it because the bush hog tires are like 10 foot wide and the deck of the trailer is only eight feet i was like this is not gonna work so um we made it happen solo and uh, it ended up working out i busted some boards and stuff getting it off but it's in the barn, it's all good to go. Real quick, uh, the new giveaway is live for the entire website. And I need to make a quick apology for everybody that's been trying to purchase the monthly mystery boxes. Cause I was like, guys, buy the monthly mystery boxes. You know, like they'll get you 20X entries for the giveaway, um, no matter when you buy them as, you know, a thank you for committing to a monthly, you know, support of the brand and the giveaways. And people weren't able to get the mystery boxes for a few days because there was a glitch with the website and it wasn't letting people purchase the mystery boxes. So I was like, you know, that's odd. Like everything else is selling just fine, but not the mystery boxes. Like it's just kind of weird because usually the mystery boxes are a popular item. Somebody messaged me, which please, if you guys have problems with the website, we don't always catch them because sometimes it's just one product that's acting up and we just don't, we just don't catch it in time. And then like somebody messaged me and he's like, hey man, I've been trying to buy a mystery box the last three days. And I was like, uh, Thank you so much. I gave my discount code for helping me out with that. Um, and then it's all it's all good now. So you can purchase those mystery boxes, get your 20X entries towards winning. LNP DG31, compound turbo 12 valve, thing is built, it's nasty. If you guys wanna hear everything that's been done to it, there's a previous video, a video or two back, everything that's done to it, it is, it is a rowdy, rig i mean it's going to be a freaking blast for somebody it comes with five grand if you want to get entered right now 15 times bonus entries are live for the entire website only until friday april 29th that is we're only doing like a five day launch week bonus that's hardly not even a week long a little bit shorter this time so 15x entries that's the max entry multiplier for the entire website 
except for mystery boxes for this entire giveaway. So 15X, this is your highest entry multiplier. If you don't want a mystery box, this is the highest entry multiplier for everything else in the store. If you buy a mystery box, you can buy it any time throughout the entire giveaway. It gets you 20X entries automatically. And then every time it renews to send you your new mystery items that nobody else has yet seen on the store, it's gonna get you 20X entries again and again. And again, every time it renews and sends you new stuff, you get 20 times entries into our giveaways. It's pretty sweet. We've got coffee, we got detailing products, we've got tons of new clothing products and apparel. So definitely go check it out, guys, if you're interested. That giveaway does end in a few weeks. Um, and 15X entries are the max entry multiplier for the entire store, excluding mystery boxes. So thank you guys so much for all the love and all the support, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.